For nearly 15 years, a few cans of spray paint and some masking tape made Eddie Van Halen's Frankenstrat guitars one of the most recognizable instruments in the world. So what does one of the world's foremost tone chasers do to flip all that on its head? He partners with a California-based company to develop something totally different. And that became the Ernie Ball Music Man Eddie Van Halen Signature Guitar. I'm Tom Tran, and this is the story behind the strings. This is my 1993 Ernie Ball Music Man Eddie Van Halen Signature Guitar in translucent gold. My pride and joy, my crown jewel, my poutine with extra gravy. Never mind that last one. It's almost identical to the one that Ed played in the early 1990s on the Four Unlawful Carnal Knowledge record and its supporting tour. He's seen holding or playing one just like this in most of the promotional materials from that Van Halen era. Here are the specs on this beauty. It's got a single cut basswood body with a maple top and gloss finish. It was available in the following colors. Black, metallic gold, natural, sunburst, translucent black, translucent blue, translucent gold, translucent pink, translucent purple, and translucent red. The back is painted black and it's got a cream binding and no pick guard. The neck was digitally reproduced from a scan of Ed's favorite Kramer neck to give it that well played worn in feel. It's a one piece maple neck, natural color, oiled with no binding. It's got 22 medium frets with black dot inlays and a 25 and a half inch scale. It's got shaler tuners in a trademark 4x2 setup, which is, well, it's four tuners on the top and two on the bottom. The headstock was also painted to match the body. It comes stock with custom wound DiMarzio designed Ernie Ball Music Man EVH pickups in the neck and bridge positions. The three way pickup selector switch is in the lower horn. The only knob is marked tone, even though it's actually for volume. It's an old joke that goes back to Eddie's Frankenstrat guitar, which only had one knob that said tone. Ed used to say that if you adjust the volume, you get good tone. The bridge is an Ernie Ball Music Man branded Floyd Rose style trim made by Goto. The EVH signature model was manufactured and built at the Ernie Ball Music Man factory in San Luis Obispo, California. They were available in music stores between 1991 and 1995, and it weighs in at just about seven pounds. If you're looking to buy one, they've grown increasingly expensive ever since Ed's passing on October 6th, 2020, after losing his battle with cancer. These originally sold for about two grand at retail shops in the early 90s. As of this recording, there were a few on Reverb listed for as much as $10,000 for some of the more rare colors. You may at some point come across similar guitars called the Axis or Axis EX models. They're even made by the same company, but those aren't true EVH signature models. There's a whole story behind those strings, and I'll explain a little of that in a minute. We'll even deep dive into it in a future video, but if you're looking to buy a true Ernie Ball Music Man Eddie Van Halen model, look for, obviously, the signature in the headstock and the pickup selector switch in the lower horn. Yes, there are a few other differences, but those are the two quick and easy telltale ways to know if you're buying an actual EVH model. And with that said, I'm starting to see some pretty good counterfeits show up on the interwebs. If you're not sure about an instrument, ask the seller for the serial number. Check with Ernie Ball's online serial number database that I've linked in the description below. Now, although not nearly as recognizable as his famous striped guitars, these are Ed's second signature series after he stopped exclusively playing the Kramer endorsed 5150 guitars. Now, I'm not going to get into the Kramer versus Ernie Ball versus PV versus EVH of it all. I think that's been covered to death. Unless you want me to in another video. In that case, leave a comment below and let me know. But when Ed's endorsement deal with Kramer Guitars, let's say, ended? He partnered with the San Luis Obispo, California-based Ernie Ball Music Man to design his new signature model. The company was already making Ed's 5150 branded electric guitar strings, so it made sense to work with them on this project. In Ed's own words, he wanted about 20 guitars just for himself that were high quality, that he could play on the record and on tour, but if he needed to, he could walk into a guitar store and just grab one off the rack, and it would be exactly the same as his. Ernie Ball Music Man's master craftsman, Dudley Gimple, was instrumental in helping bring the EVH signature model to reality. Eddie went to him with a rough sketch of something between a Les Paul and a Telecaster, which is really the best way to describe this instrument. 
And according to Gimple, several were made with brown backs, not the black one, and the original plan was to use a Shaler licensed Floyd Rose style tremolo. Several of the prototypes in the Ernie Ball vault still have those trems on them, but a licensing agreement with Fender kept that from happening. One of the early amber quilt top prototypes would be Ed's main guitar for most of that record and tour. It was his number one, literally. He had a number one decal put on the top of the upper horn and on the headstock, so it was easily identified. Then in 1995, the deal with Ernie Ball Music Man ended. Ed, who was already working with PV Electronics on his 5150 signature amp, unveiled his third signature series guitar, the PV Wolfgang, named after his son, Wolfgang Van Halen. And with that, the Ernie Ball Music Man era of Eddie Van Halen signature guitars ended. Sort of. As I mentioned earlier, if you search for an EVH guitar right now, you may see an Ernie Ball Music Man branded guitar called the Axis or an Axis EX, or slightly more affordable model made by Sterling, or its similarly licensed brand, OLP, which stands for Officially Licensed Product. Those guitars are mostly EVH guitars with some changes. I mentioned the big differences earlier in the video and we'll do a full comparison video later because if we do it here, this video will be an hour long. My drummer Charles once said to me that I was the only guitarist he knew who prefers the Sammy Hagar era of Van Halen over David Lee Roth. Now before you start keyboard raging, it has nothing to do with either singer or even the songs. It's actually much, much more personal than that. My older brother, also named Tom, but without the H, we're like a less famous George Foreman family. Now he is 10 years older than me and he also plays guitar. And like the Van Halen brothers, when he wasn't playing his guitar, I would try to noodle on it. And he's the reason I listen to the music that I listen to. 80s arena rock. Def Leppard, Tesla, Dokken, Ozzy, Night Ranger, all of it. But especially Van Halen. They were my favorite, and still are. And in or around the mid-1980s, my brother left home and moved to Boston, just like Diamond Dave left after the 1984 album. So my brother left, and Dave left. Now I didn't have an older brother or a favorite band. And 70-year-old Tom was alone. But of course, in 1986, Sammy Hagar took over as Van Halen's lead singer, starting with the 5150 album. And for some reason that to this day, I do not understand, my older brother's friends nicknamed me Sammy from Alabama. So where does this guitar come in? Well, the New York Times did an analysis of people's musical taste, and they reported data from Spotify showed that our musical tastes kind of lock in in our early to mid-teens. For men, it's between the ages of 13 and 16. For women, it's between the ages of 11 and 14. So basically, your favorite song when you were 13 kind of defines your musical tastes. I saw the sign, it opened up my eyes. I saw the sign, life is demanding without understanding. Anyway, I was already into Van Halen, and in 1993, when I was 14, Van Halen released the Right Here, Right Now live album which supported the For Unlawful Carnal Knowledge studio record. And the guitar that Ed played on that record and tour? This one, the Ernie Ball Music Man Eddie Van Halen Signature Man. Also, as a 14-year-old red-blooded American male, my hormones were surging through me, and my favorite band just released an album called <laughs> So, you figure it out. Then sophomore year of high school happened. I was on tour with my high school's swing choir, I was in the band, and our musical director, Jim Diot just let the band wander around New York City, and I stumbled past Manny's Music Shop on 48th and 7th, which sadly isn't there anymore. And I looked through the window at Manny's like a kid in front of a toy store, and I saw it hanging on the wall behind the counter. This guitar, or at least its twin. In 1993, this guitar cost about $2,000, and I was 14 or 15 years old, so it might as well cost $2 million. But that's the moment it became my white whale. And of course, a year or two later, they stopped making it. And the rarity of this model made it even more expensive. So fast forward to 2019. Stand-up comedy was treating me pretty well. I got a couple of acting gigs and the world hadn't taken a three year pause yet. I was doing all right. And like many of you, I'm sure I had an eBay alert set for this guitar. Any keyword I could jam in there, I did. Ernie Ball, Music Man, EVH, Van Halen, Eddie, Ed, 5150, Amber, Gold, whatever. Then one day, 
showed up. But now that broke kid from Buffalo has some money. But no buy it now option, only bids. Three more excruciating days of bids. The starting price was $1,800. I waited until the day the auction ended to place a bid, but so did everyone else. Then I saw the game happening in front of me. You know the game. You've played the game. Who's gonna snipe this guitar? There were only four of us bidding. The first person bid up by $10. The next person bid up another $20. Then the third person upped that price by the obligatory $51.50. This was all happening with three minutes left in the auction. It had been 25 years since the first time I saw this guitar in person. Too many times I had this opportunity, but I didn't have the money, or I had the money, but it was earmarked for something else, or someone in my life told me no. But this time, this time, that kid standing in front of Manny's Music Store in Manhattan, standing there with a wad of cash. I mean, technically you were laying in bed at 4 a.m. with a 12 month zero interest offer from PayPal, but you know, whatever. Anyway, I had the money and I just decided, you know what, I'm not playing this game. And with less than a minute, I placed a bid that was hundreds of dollars over the current price. And then the feverish rebids began, but it was too late for the other three bidders. And 30 seconds later, it was mine, finally. And I've loved it and cherished it ever since. Now, before this gets too long, I'll leave you with this. A few weeks after I received the guitar in the mail, someone reached out to me on Facebook. His name's Jim, and this was his guitar. He had asked his son to sell it for him, and he looked me up and found out I was a stand-up comic and gave me a holler. He said he wanted this baby to go to a loving home, preferably a Van Halen fan and he got his wish. We got both. He even found the original sales slip from when he bought this in 1993 and sent it to me. And I promised him I'd let him know when I do an episode about her. And yes, it's a her. I named her Valerie, after Wolfgang's mom and Ed's first wife, Miss Valerie Bertinelli. That's it, thanks for watching another episode of the Story Behind the Strings, I hope you liked it. Hang on one second. Hey, this is Tom from the future, I'm in the editing bay. Well, I'm editing, uh, and I need to thank a couple of people who helped out after I'd already filmed this episode. First of all, Lance from EVHArtGuitars.com. He provided me with a photo of the solid black Ernie Ball Music Man EVH guitar that I used at the beginning. I spent literally days looking for that photo on the internet when I should have been working or feeding my kids or focusing on my relationship. He's got a great blog, so check that out. And at EBMMEVH, that stands for Ernie Ball Music Man, Eddie Van Halen, on Instagram and YouTube. He got me the photo of Eddie's number one guitar that was hanging in the studio. Uh, he's also the one that got me the decals for my guitar. So if you need some decals for your Ernie Ball Music Man, Eddie Van Halen guitar, check him out. Links to everything are in the show notes. Now, back to the video. Which is your favorite color of the Ernie Ball Music Man, Eddie Van Halen guitar? Or which is your favorite EVH model? The Ernie Ball, the PV Wolfgang, the EVH Wolfgang, or something else. Looking at you, Kramer. Let me know in the comments below. As always, help spread the word about the show by feeding the algorithm. It's easy. Hit the like button, subscribe to the page, and click on the bell icon to be notified when a new episode drops. I'll be making my way through my collection, and I'm trying to release a new episode every three weeks or so. But if you really like these and want more, and sooner, become a Patreon patron where you can tell me which guitars you want me to go behind the strings of, even if I don't own it. Please follow me on all the places, including Instagram, threads, Facebook, and TikTok. Links to everything are in the show notes. Of course, my stand-up comedy dates are on my website, tomtran.com. Thanks again, and let the strings tell your story. Whatevs.